Billy's answer. In 1942 I began my first contacts with extraterrestrials at the age of five, with Faf, the grandfather of Sam Yeas, the Pleiadian female. To start with I learned a lot through my association with him regarding the spiritual teachings and existence and function of creation's laws and commandments, as well as the use of mental spirit, telepathy, so that the communication between Sfath and myself could be accomplished in this manner. Beginning in 1944, during numerous visits on his beam ship, Sfath explained to me many things and informed me about important data concerning many fields of knowledge, humanities, history, creation and evolution, incidents and facts, etc., which I had to learn and retain in my memory. This was usually accomplished through electronically induced, deep hypnosis. He explained to me at a later date that due to our mutual efforts my understanding had grown to that of a 35-year-old person, even though in reality I was only 7 years old, and that this knowledge would still increase manifold in the coming years. I was told that I would have the highest degree of spiritual evolution of any human being on earth regarding spiritual knowledge, understanding, and ability. It must be understood that this did not refer to any knowledge gleaned from books and school training, and not to knowledge patterned on something learned in schools. Instead, it refers to the knowledge of humanities, the existence, workings and utilization of the creative laws and commandments, as well as the teachings of creation and our origins all the way up to instructions on evolution and the eternal absolutum. In later years I was once again pointedly prepared in various ways by different people of terrestrial and extraterrestrial origin in many countries on earth. They instructed me in the most diverse fields of knowledge of a spiritual and physical nature, so I would be able to fulfill my task in the mission, and continue my contacts with the Pleiadians. Thus, the necessary requirements and propensities for a meaningful collaboration between the extraterrestrials and me were established and renewed in accordance with my previous lives, as had been the case already for the mission since ancient times. Furthermore, the spiritually and physically very advanced Pleiadians are able to maintain personal, i.e. physical contact, only with those earth humans who have reached the high spiritual level of evolution necessary for the physical and telepathic contacts and for meaningful dialogues. I am the only human being on earth who is able to maintain physical and telepathic contact with Pleiadians and other life forms of the same evolutionary level. Nobody on earth is able to do this, not even those people whose spirit forms did not originate on earth. This is the reason why the Pleiadians began to contact me in my early childhood to lay the groundwork for my forthcoming contacts with them. My spirit form had already been active for millions of years in the Lyra Vega systems, and had come to Earth, voluntarily, in human bodies as teacher, herald, and prophet. It had also returned into the material sphere from a highly spiritual level our hat Ather Sada level and it already performed prophetic functions since our times on Lazen and other planets of the Lyra and Vega systems. In addition, my spirit form, under the earlier name of No Kedemjin, assumed the responsibility of fulfilling the required prophetic mission and function. This duty involved, as its mission goal, the teaching, the offering of the truth of the creative information, the creative laws, commandments, and spiritual teachings, etc., to human life forms. At first, all this information was brought exclusively to the humans of the Lyra and Vega systems, and only later to the humans on the planet Earth, and to all the other existing spirit forms. These other spiritual forms included the many millions of extraterrestrial spirit forms who moved to Earth, voluntarily or involuntarily, from the Lyra and Vega systems, and the destroyed planet Malona in the SOL system. Fourth question, what do you think of the legend that three million years ago 144,000 Pleiadian souls reincarnated on Earth to aid the development of this planet? 
Billy's answer, this legend has no truth in it whatsoever. The first extraterrestrials who came to Earth were not Pleiadians but humans from worlds that exist within another dimension in the area of the Lyra and Vega systems. The first Lyrians, together with the Vigans, came to Earth initially 22 million years ago. Their stay here was very brief and they continued their travels to other star clusters and planets. Their history is largely obscure, even though assault groups occasionally continued to return to Earth. Approximately 389,000 years ago, several million Larians and Vigans again left their native worlds, entered our order of space and time in this dimension, and came to Earth where they mingled with the Earthlings. They procreated in the normal manner and through the manipulation of genes by genetic engineers. From this interaction evolved the Larian and Earth-human mixture of beings by normal reproduction. The results of the genetic engineering produced beings that were part human, part animal, and included giants, titans, and other creatures. In the course of hundreds and thousands of years these creatures were displaced once again and eventually died out because they could not reproduce or because conditions for their life forms proved fatal for them. The many millions of Lyrians and Vigans, who had left their native worlds, were headed by 144,207 leaders and sub-leaders, etc., who reigned over their followers in a rather hierarchic manner. The leaders also transferred this behavior to Earth humans with whom they had intermingled in the past to create human descendants of various types. These 144,207 leaders and their subordinates were, indeed, the ringleaders who were essentially responsible for the misdeeds, false teachings, and false religions which were absorbed and imitated by humans on Earth. Not everything the leaders brought to Earth was evil, false, or criminal, however, many valuable items and ideas were presented to the Earthlings with regard to crafts, professions, philosophies, ways of thinking, medicine, technology, and many other things. This demonstrates that the 144,207 spirit forms of these ancient Lyrians and Vigans were not reincarnated on Earth by way of another planet, to further the evolution of Earth, and are not Pleiadians, but simply Lyrian and Vigan spirit forms. It was much later that the Splinter, Space Traveler, group's descendants of Lyra and Vega called themselves Pleiadians. These splinter groups stayed away from Earth, while the other travelers from Lyra and Vega settled on Earth, only after suitable, habitable worlds in the Pleiades region had been discovered and settled. These worlds, however, just like the Lyra and Vega planets, are situated outside our space and time system in another dimension, a mere fraction of a second off our space-slash-time dimension. The star cluster system of the Pleiades in our present time and space dimension supports no life whatsoever because it is still at a very early stage in its evolution. For this reason, it is understandable that the immigrants from Lyra and Vega, as well as the 144,207 leaders remained on Earth. 